Severe weather season in the tri state. Steve Raleigh will be up in a minute. And storms lead to power outages, which then lead to a big spike in home generator sales. So we have a new report tonight on some do's and don'ts when it comes to generators and some best buys. Summer storm season has arrived. Serviceman Paul Maniscalco says many people who have a generator in their garage don't realize that generator needs regular maintenance. They let it sit for a year or two and then expect a miracle. Often it won't start or is too small to power their needs. Our partners at Consumer Reports magazine say don't buy the smallest and cheapest generator you find. It recommends at least 5,000 to 7,500 watts. Then when you run the generator, beware carbon monoxide poisoning. Keep the generator at least 15 feet from your house and be sure nearby doors and windows are shut. And to make sure your generator will start when you need it most, you should always use gas stabilizer. Also, try to change out the gas once a year. Meantime, our friends at the Consumer Guide Angie's List say, if you want to power your appliances and air conditioning, consider paying more for a whole house generator. If you're living in the city and you may really just need it for a few hours, a, a portable generator can be a great option. They cost about $1,000. But if you live in a rural area where you may be without electricity for a longer period of time, you're probably going to want to go with a whole house generator. That's Angie Hicks from Angie's List. Consumer Reports top rated models for whole house generators, the Generac Core Power. It's $1,800 plus installation. If you're on a budget, a portable Generac, the 550 watts for $670. Also, the Troy built 7,000 watts for $900. On WCPO.com, read my consumer investigation on JCPenney's price hikes. Feel free to add your opinion to the dozens of viewer comments on the story so you don't waste your money. Tanya. Thank you, John.